and this is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And my special guest today is Martin W. Mahoney, uh, the Executive Director of the Bennington Museum. And we're going to be speaking about a very interesting uh, location, very interesting uh, set of activities, and uh, something that is one of the major uh, cultural resources, uh, not only in Vermont, but other parts of the United States. Uh, welcome, Mark. Hey, thank you, Dennis, for uh, the invitation, and it's a real pleasure to be here today. Well, first of all, what I like to do on Positively Vermont is tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, well, I think the first thing that uh, most people ask is if I grew up in Vermont, and sadly I did not. I'm from away. Um, but I did, I did grow up in a place that is equally as wild. I grew up in the Adirondack Mountains. So I was lucky enough to spend my formative years in the mountains and uh, came to Castleton to get my bachelor's degree in history and with a minor in art history. And that's where I really fell in love with Vermont. Uh, when you're that young and you're impressionable and you just get placed in this amazing natural environment, you can't help but fall in love with it. So uh, at that point, I went to SUNY Albany. I finished a master's degree in public history and was lucky enough to work for the Park Service, uh, for the Denver Museum of Natural History during that time. And then I moved out to the North Shore of Boston to work at the Peabody Essex Museum, which was fantastic. Amazing, amazing site. I'm sure many of your listeners have been there, but it was... Uh, a good experience because it was a broad, culturally sweeping museum. It was aggressively expanding and it was uh, definitely uh, in a growth mindset. After a few year years there, uh, I decided to come back towards this side of the, uh, the great state of Massachusetts and took a job at the Norman Rockwell Museum where I spent the bulk of my career and uh, ended up in charge of the traveling exhibitions program, um, did some curatorial work, uh, worked with the development office, and at the same time I finished a MBA program and was lucky enough to get hired at, here at the Bennington Museum about just under three years ago. And it's been, uh, been fantastic so far, helping the museum come out of its pandemic mindset, helping it uh, reopen and uh, help redefine its mission and its direction for hopefully the next 20 years. That's great. Um, that's a really fantastic background. And uh, speaking of background, tell us about the Bennington Museum and give us uh, its history uh, and uh, some facts about uh, that location. Sure, sure. Well, the Bennington Museum is an older institution. It traces its origins back into the 1850s. And it really was um, put to, put to uh, Great. I mean, they really seem to unify their their direction around um, the 1870s, 1880s, as they the planning for the Bennington Monument got underway, and the Historic Society at the time, um, or the Historical Association, excuse me, really was the driver in in setting the course for the building and the planning of the Bennington Battle Monument, which is tremendously significant, um, not only as a landmark for the town where the Bennington Museum is, but also, you know, culturally, it it was a significant battle in the American Revolution, uh, precursor to the, the Battle of Saratoga. Really fascinating um, event, which which happened uh, in Walloomsek, which is in New York State. But you have to remember, Bennington, I mean, excuse me, Vermont wasn't even a state. It was a contested territory and contested mm -hmm. at the point so much that, of course, Vermont became its own republic. So uh, after that, the Historical Association turned its eyes to becoming a museum and in 1928 settled in the building that we are in now. And that's really where we kind of consider our, our birthday because that's when the Bennington Museum was formed. And it was formed in the old Catholic church in Bennington. So it was desanctified and the museum purchased it from the diocese in Burlington and opened up the museum and it's been here ever since. It abuts Old Bennington. It's near the old burial ground where Robert Frost is buried. Um, he's literally in our backyard. We, the museum's expanded six times 
in that that time frame um various expansions and then in 1972 the museum purchased and moved the grandma moses schoolhouse from the family property to here in bennington and is attached to the museum and it served as the moses museum for a while and then it's kind of evolved into an education center and the moses collection has undergone a uh, recent um, expansion in the last six months and we've incorporated that more deeply into our uh, programming so that's where we are it's um it's a uh, it's an interesting interesting site it's got it's got a lot of age it's got a lot of history it's got the same problems that any old institution has that, that was the the attic for the community for a while but mm -hmm. it's really really turned its focus to art history and innovation so we're we're lucky we're in a very culturally rich area we've got Bennington College as one of our community partners and we are just north of Williamstown Mass and Brattleboro right over the mountain so we're really sitting in that sweet spot and we're lucky enough to get a lot of traffic from the capital district in New York State as well so I mean to us to us the the state borders are are meaningful but they're not a barrier for our visitors that's great well, give us an idea of, of the scope of the facility and what people would see when they they enter right well most people most people come for for a few reasons i mean we we can tick them off the top three would be the grandma moses collection which is fantastic we hold the largest public collection of grandma moses art in the world which has been recently expanded by the purchase of five recent paintings which is fantastic um the second thing would be the battle of bennington um because it's a significant cultural event we work with the monument in helping commemorate that event in the space that we have here at the museum we're hoping to augment that for the um vermont 250th or the semi-quincentennial that's coming up and uh we I'd actually i'd say we have four 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 main drivers we also have the bangton potters bangton pottery um collection here which is significant we just hosted the Bennington, um, pot, uh, the uh, the pottery, the, excuse me, the Stoneware Collectors Group here at the museum last week, and of course we have a a really strong uh, mid century modern collection that's based. I mean, it, it was out of the the Bennington College group, but it certainly was um, significant and and moved the needle both worldwide, but particularly in Bennington as a um, interesting cultural space for the for the mid 20th century that's great we're going to focus on some upcoming exhibits but why don't you tell us a little bit about the exhibits you've had uh in the last year or so or, or uh, have right now sure um last year we had a fantastic exhibit it was called for the love of vermont and that was a partnership with the southern vermont art center and that was to present the lyman orton collection and lyman who owns the Vermont Country Store was is a major significant art collector in Vermont painting in particular. So he um, has a master wide collection and we presented that successfully last year. I believe it's going on to um, the, the center in Barrie, uh, the Vermont Historical Associ uh, Society. And then this year we're doing a pretty wide range of shows we've got uh we've got presently on view we've got a piece called dark goddess which is a piece done by shanta shanta lee who most recently presented up at the museum in burlington it's it's really a show about identity and how we as individuals how we identify what we take from um and what what in the past people took from and how we define ourselves but the the signature show this year is called Vermont Rocks, and that is a show that deals with the mineral wealth of Vermont, how artists have incorporated that um, uh, into their sculptures, into their paintings, into their photography, into their, their, their spoken word art form, and how the, also that industry has helped shape Vermont over the last two decades, I mean, two centuries, excuse me. And then we're we're wrapping up the year with a a piece called "The Circus Is Coming to Town," which is a uh, really fascinating look at circus posters that were stored in a barn over years, and literally peeling back the layers of the poster 
to show how things have changed, how the posters evolved over the years. And it's it's an interesting um, archaeologically as it is uh, curatorially. So you get to literally peel back the layers and, and talk about that. And of course, as as we do every year for four years in a row, we have the North Bennington Outdoor Sculpture Show that we've partnered with, and we'll have 25 pieces of sculpture on museum grounds that you can come and look at anytime. That's great. Well, tell us, I understand that uh, there are certain other functions that the museum fulfills. and uh, One is as a community center. Uh, tell us about that aspect. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So what we're trying to do in the last couple of years, and we've really refocused the way we we interact with our public, we want to become a place for the community, a place uh, that the, everyone in the community feels welcome to, and we're trying to remove any barriers. So certainly, price would be a barrier for some, but you know, it's just the perception of museums as um, somewhat rarefied spaces that are not for everyone. And like many institutions, we're actively going out and combating that. We are making sure that our museum educators and our outreach coordinators are in the community. They're at all the events. So we've got Mayfest coming up in Bennington. They're there. They're at um, Juneteenth celebrations. They're going to be there at Bennington Battle Day. They're going to be out in the community, um, visible and uh, an active presence in the, in the space. We're also doing a lot of free programming at the museum. Two of them are really, really successful. One's a longstanding program called Music at the Museum, which has professional um, concerts in our space that are free to the public. And we've recently pivoted, pivoted on that idea. And we also do uh, concerts in the courtyard, which is a Friday outdoor series of concerts, more R&B, rock, um, country focused, but uh, definitely community oriented. And we have a pop-up place come and sell tacos and soda and beer. And it just seems, you know, you bring your chair, you hang out and you're just with the community and it really really fills uh, a space in Bennington because Bennington doesn't have a lot of green space it doesn't have a public green like a lot of traditional New England towns do uh, I think the the town the town uh, select board is trying to address that they've done work by putting in a splash pad and they're trying to build a skateboard park but it's it's still Lex. So we, we do have the space here at the museum to throw on these kind of events. We do have 10 acres. We have the George Aiken walking trail, which is maintained by our volunteers. And it's a lovely spot to walk your dog and interact with nature and um, also a great spot to place sculptures. So we're really trying to, to reach out to that community. Um, kind of following that, that tangent, we've also changed our programming to a bit. And when I say programming, you know, the way what we program in the building. So recently we we did a uh, we revived a very popular program, um, which was the one day living tattoo show. So we invited 15 models to come in and display themselves and tell the stories of why they're tattooed. Um, what was their motivation and, uh, you know, talk about it, because. In some ways, tattooing is a really democratic way to collect art. It's a way to display it. It's a way to collect something that's meaningful and it tells a story. So it's the same reason you or I would put a piece on the wall. It means something. We'd like to look at it, um, but it's intensely personal. So that was that was very, very successful. And we're following that up with uh, with a, a mini disc golf putting tournament here at the museum. And that's going to be in, in amongst the uh, the Enboss sculptures and the artists are on board with that. They they love the idea of people interacting with with the sculptures in a different way. And we're just trying to, you know, move that demographic to slightly younger, maybe left of center, left of or right of center, just to try to try something new. Mm -hmm. Tell us what this living room is. Uh, oh, right, right. The living room theory. Uh, that's that's uh, a term that I've kind of glommed on to that talks about how in the museum should really be the community's living room. It should be a space where you have lots of events, where you can come, you're comfortable, you can sit. Uh, hopefully someday we'll have a cafe here. Uh, we can have a cup of coffee and you just feel very, very comfortable and accessible for all. But it's mostly about comfort. It's being comfortable in the space. 
it's being comfortable with addressing the art. You know, if you're asked questions by the art or the exhibits at the museum, yeah, you can you can be challenged. You can be um, maybe it's not for you, but at least you're open to it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like it's like being in the living room at your home. And I don't know if, if your family's like this or not, but mine, you know, you hang out with your family members in the living room and um, you say something. It's it's usually challenged immediately, <laughs> and you have to you have to um, you know it's it's definitely survival of, of the fittest. So talk about your ideas, um, talk about the artwork. If it doesn't speak to you, why not? Um, you know, when people say, uh, at a, look at a certain piece of art and say, oh, you know, I could do that or my child could do that. Well, you didn't. And let's talk about why the artist decided to make those choices, why why they're doing that or why, why is the museum doing um, so much work with, let's say, um, minorities that haven't had a voice before. Uh, well, because their stories are valid and it adds, adds to you know, a richer understanding of the whole movement. So Native Americans in the, uh, the American Revolution. I mean, their roles are, are significant and important. And you know, the traditional narrative is that they were there and they didn't contribute as much, just specifically at the Battle of Bennington, but it's absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, their people and what were their motivations. So it's, it's, uh, that living room concept is be comfortable, come enjoy and interact. That's great. Now tell us a little bit about your future plans. Uh, we're recording mm -hmm. this in uh, 2024. Uh, tell us about uh, what you envision for the future of the Bennington Museum. Well, it's a really timely question because on June 1st, we are doing our summer kickoff party on top of the hill of the museum. It's the first time we've ever done anything like that. And we're specifically doing it to celebrate where we've come as an institution in the last few years. We've certainly um, made sure our architectural envelope is secure. We've reevaluated our programming and we're, at, we're on good financial standing. With those successes, what are we going to do for the future? And the, the team that I work with and the board of trustees have come up with a series of capital projects. It's not a capital campaign. It's a series of capital projects to improve the campus and to expand our reach into the community. And some of it is, you know, forward facing campus improvements, which includes accessibility, um, you know, really making the visitor experience something special when you come into our parking lot. So it's not just parking lot entrance and um, leaning into the Grandma Moses schoolhouse and really modifying that. So it's a, it's a place for classes, it's it's augmented and upgraded to today's technology standards, and it's a place where our educators can bring in community members and they feel free to teach in a space that's worthy of it, instead of the ad hoc kind of space that we have right now. And then, you know, looking at how we best utilize the, the museum, museum space in the future, whether that's a um, expansion on, on the museum or a separate building, but the first two projects are our priorities first. And that's that's where we hope to go. We hope to really improve the space, and hopefully, when we're able to um, show the public, some of these images will be available to them um, in time for this podcast. That's great. Uh, before we conclude, one of the things we we like to do here on Positively Vermont is ask the question: What do you need? Uh, what do you need from the public? What do you need from the perhaps legislature or uh, uh, volunteers, that that kind of thing. What, what? How can people participate and work with you uh, for the Bennington Museum? That's a that's a very smart question, and you know the short answer is everything. Um, if you want to volunteer, we 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 have an entry point for all members of the community, no matter what you want to do. If you want to interact with the museum and you want to participate, certainly volunteer. Volunteer at a regional history room. Volunteer at our, um, you know, George Aiken Wild Wildflower Trail. If you want to be outside, if you want to deal with school children and work with them, certainly there, there's a space for you, and we'd we'd welcome that. Um, I, I would like to, uh, you know, I just want people to show up at our events, continue to show up at, at our free shows. They're very popular, but come if, bring a friend, and then as we roll out these uh, capital projects. I hope the community takes a deep look at them and gives us feedback. And hopefully it's if it speaks to you, talk to me. And let's figure out a way to 
to make it happen because Bennington's a community that punches up. We 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 have to. We don't have um, you know, the industry base that we used to. We we um are, are fighting the same issues that all small cities are fighting, but we are definitely on a, a slow curve upward and we and we're punching above our weight and we want to continue to do so. So help make us make this um, vision a reality, help make this a space for all the public, but something that the people of Bennington and the county are, are also very proud of. And they look at it and they say, that is that speaks to me, that's my history, that is, isn't it wonderful that we have this in our backyard? That's great. And do you envision any kind of academic uh, cooperation? Uh, th this show gets around the world indeed, though, certainly in other states. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything of vision with students or, or uh, faculty uh, in, in the fields uh, relative to the Bennington Museum? Sure. Uh, we we do a paid internship for, of course, our high school students, um, and we work with Bennington College, as, and they send over a, a number of interns that uh, get credit for their work. Uh, we are working with the Greater 250th, um, Bennington 250th com, uh, Commission, as well as the Bennington Historical Society, which is a program of the Bennington Museum. And we're producing a book on the 250th, you know, how, how the seismic waves of the Battle of Bennington reached out and we're still feeling it today. So it's not necessarily gonna all be about the American Revolution, but it's going to be cause and effect. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, know, you can tie that into the way that Benningtonians re reacted to the Civil War, to the way they embraced anti-slavery causes um, in, into the, the protest movements of the 1960s. You can all trace it back to that kind of momentous series of days when the battle happened and the American Revolution. That's great. Well, you have a website, uh, www.benningtonmuseum.com, uh, or is that all? Dot org, benningtonmuseum.org. Uh, you have a Facebook page. Uh, I, I, and uh, uh, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, give us the, the, the uh, way they could reach you personally or the museum. Uh, give sure. us a little directions. Sure. Um, if you want to reach me at the Bennington Museum, you can email me at director at benningtonmuseum.org. Or you can also uh, go onto our website and connect to me that way. Um, certainly you can find my phone number on, on the website there. And I am, I'm a resident of Bennington itself. I'm in the community. So if you're in the community, chances are we've, we've met. Um, I, I shop at the same store as everyone else does. I, I go to the, the restaurants, uh, I get my car work done and, you know, I, I buy my, my bike accessories at the, at the bike hub downtown. So I'm, I'm here. If you ever need to speak to me, feel free to pop in. I'm here eight, nine, 10 hours a day, uh, five days a week. Excellent. And then sometimes on the weekends. Excellent. Well, that is really uh, wonderful, wonderful news. And uh, hopefully we can uh, return sometime in the future to uh, look at some of these projects that you spoke about. And uh, thank you very much uh, for appearing on Positively Vermont. Thank you, Dennis. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. This is Dennis McMahon. My guest has been Martin Mahoney, uh, the executive director of the Bennington Museum. Thank you for watching.